All right, guys, no preamble, no intro. We're going to get right into the painting. You'll notice I've primed this with German, I think it's called German Red Brown. It's Vallejo Surface Primer. I'm going to be priming all my Death Guard with that color because I think what's really cool is all the recessed areas of any model are now going to have like a rusty orange tone to them, which I think overall looks really good with the green of the Death Guard. Now, then what I'm going to do is come in I'm just airbrushing in uh, the like metallic areas and basically what I, I kind of think of this as, uh, I don't know, pre-spraying it because the reality is when I come back in with the green, I am almost certainly going to get green on some of this metallic, but at the end of the day, it still saves me time painting the metallic areas when I come back with a brush because I've done some of that base coating uh, really, really quickly with the airbrush. Now, if you don't have an airbrush, it's no worries. You can just basically hand brush any of the steps that I do. I don't think there's going to be anything in this video that you couldn't do with a regular brush or potentially with, um, you could use like um, makeup brushes. They're really good for dry brushing and for getting uh, some pretty good, you know, paint coverage on large flat surfaces like you find here on the Plague Burst. All right, so now I'm coming in with P3 Paints Ordic Olive. I'm sure that, you know, Vallejo or I don't know, maybe GW, but I'm sure there are other alternatives to this color um, because I know P3 isn't super easy to get out there. Um, hopefully you can find it. I think this is a really, really nice green as a base coat for uh, Death Guard. So I'm going to lay this down again using the airbrush. You can sort of tell that I mean, it's it's pretty subtle, but I am leaving a little bit of less coverage in any of the recessed areas, again, to let some of this red-brown show through and give a bit of a rusty vibe. And all I'm going to do is go around and cover all of the flat areas or all the armor plates with Ortic Olive. Um, and, you know, later when we come in with different greens, we're going to be covering up a little bit less of the area. But in this case, I'm I'm covering most of it. Um, again, if you don't have an airbrush, just a big makeup brush or a tank brush, whatever you've got, uh, it should work fine as well. All right, so the first highlight we're gonna do is Vallejo model color golden olive. Again, there are probably other, you know, sort of yellowy olive greens that you can use from other manufacturers. Um, this is the one that I thought is you're just gonna hit just the right tone. Now I am using Vallejo airbrush medium or flown prover kind of, you know, you can use either one. Uh, you know, roughly 50-50 in the cup here. Mix it up. I usually use like an old paintbrush or a plastic coffee stirrer to mix it up in the cup so you don't damage it too much. And again, just going in, I'm laying down these, these highlights. This is the first highlight, kind of blending it with the or previous Ortic Olive. And again, leaving a little bit of that orange showing in some of the deeper recessed areas. But this is going to be, you know, another fairly opaque uh, layer and again, use a brush if you want to, but just go over all of the Ordic olive areas. And so, for example, if you look um, up at the top of the tank there, you see under the barrel, there's that sort of peak in the middle of it. That's where you would apply more of this yellow highlight because, or sort of green highlight, because it's a bit of a raised area. So the highlights go a little bit more heavy, heavy on the raised areas and a little lighter as you get into the recessed areas. Now there isn't a ton more to stay, say about this step, but I'm just showing you, you know, giving you a few more angles on where I'm applying it. Um, so you can sort of see, you know, where did the highlights go? Where did the green go versus wh which areas are just left metal? All right, this next step is using Scale 75 or Scale Colors Fantasy and Games 
toxic waste green. Uh, it's a very light, um, almost a beigey yellow greenish color. Anyway, you kind of saw it in the camera. Um, again, using Vallejo Airbrush Center to reduce it for airbrushing. And, you know, again, like about a 50-50 mix is probably good enough to have it spray without getting too speckly. The lighter these colors get, the more risk there is of speckling off the brush. Uh, airbrush um, and occasionally to avoid that you can sort of wipe off the tip of the needle and that can help but you can see here again um, once again I'm, I'm just applying it I'm saying again a lot I'm just applying it to even smaller areas so leaving some of the ortic olive some leaving some of the golden olive showing but creating that extra bright highlight with this um, and then yeah again it Again, I'm saying again, you use a, a makeup brush if you want to do like some really sort of grinding, swirling highlights that'll help blend this in better or just a regular brush, whatever your comfort level is. You can see, though, that an airbrush really, really speeds up painting an army and certainly these Death Guard. I'm, I'm actually currently painting all of the Terminators, all of the troops using my airbrush for these initial layers. It's incredibly fast. I've painted like 1500 points already in like a couple weeks so get get an airbrush i should i always say that but you can tell i like it all right this part's really cool at least i think so now you could leave that greenish yellow alone if you wanted but here i'm airbrushing vallejo game ink yellow and just giving it a nice glaze coat over all of the green we did already and it's going to create this really vibrant tox again toxic looking yellowish green i just think it looks so much richer than it did before before it's a little washed out looking i would say and it pulls all those colors together now at first especially on this large tank it looks almost too bright like it's it's a bit much and again you may not want to do it or, or use this but i really like how it looks i think it really makes the army pop um and it looks amazing on the troops it's just that you know on this on the slightly larger areas of the plague burst it's a little overbearing, but once we come in with weathering, that's going to really help to pull it down quite a bit. So I wouldn't worry too much about this. Um, I think with brushes, you may end up with more brush stroke issues, but, um, you know, so hopefully you have an airbrush, but I think you can still use a brush to do the yellow ink step. All right, so we came in with Typhus Corrosion. I actually learned this trick from Next Level Painting. Um, Kenny Boucher, he said he always coats his tracks with Typhus Corrosion before he paints them. I think that's a great idea, frankly. And, and actually, I'm going to go one step further in a way. Well, he maybe does this anyway. But just grind a bunch of it into the wheels and cogs and then just let all of that dry for now. Now for the gold, I'm using Balthazar gold and I'm not going to put it on a lot of the trim like I'm going to do and this is going to be true of my troops as well like I'll do the shoulder trim but I'm not going to do all the trim gold because I don't necessarily want a really heavy orange and green look like they, they usually have. I'm going to end up doing a lot of the trim just as like like a silvery metal and then we're going to um, weather that down with rust and stuff to get some of that um, orange back in i'm using um, vallejo metal colors i think that was exhaust manifold shake it up really good because this stuff um it's really thin but as you can see it brushes on super easy um, it doesn't really obscure any details which is nice and it you know gives great coverage obviously it's great for airbrushing but in this case we're now at a point where or i'm at a point where i'm not going to be airbrushing much at all because the green that we're happy you know we're happy with the green and we don't want to mess it up so at this point it's time to just start using brushes more and more um, but there again you see how i did get green on the metal but it already had been a little bit metal so it's much faster to just quickly restore that metal look um, versus starting sort of from scratch without having done that pre-spray we did earlier and yeah you can also see how the rust kind of shows through in various cogs and in various areas um, that's why i like that red brown base um, primer coat that i was talking about but yeah just go around paint all the metally stuff with this um, i'm also doing the trim I, it's harder to tell here but on the front of the dozer blade um, you know and certainly on the spike strips on the top the trim that wasn't gold, I am doing in this color, this silvery exhaust manifold, uh, and that's going to be the basis of a lot of rust. Now, to sort of do a little bit of highlighting uh, on the corrosion, 
I'm going to, you know, and on the chain mail, I'm going to do some highlights and it's, it's very patchy because I'm just trying to have some metal show through. I think in hindsight, I could have just waited till I've done the rust step because I'm not sure if this is a really productive step after I end up covering it up with a bunch of rust. And I'll tell you, I'm actually really kind of feeling it out and finding my way. This is the very first Death Guard model I'm painting. So I'm not even totally confident and sure in my paint job as I paint this. And I'm sort of feeling it out and seeing what's working and seeing what's not. Uh, before I get to the rest of the troops. Turns out it's actually working really well and I'll maybe I'll do some more videos on Death Guard. Now, at this stage, the yellow was bugging me, or I'm calling it yellow, the green, because um, it had been shiny from the ink. So you saw there, I came in with a matte airbrush spray and flattened it out and it looked much better to me. Like it didn't have that yellowy, um, sorry, satin ink color, ink finish. I haven't made a video in a while. Um, here what I'm doing, and I don't think it comes through well on camera. It does in person, at least a little bit better. I'm going around, I'm highlighting a lot of the edges or the scratches or, you know, any any sharp edges. I'm highlighting those. And of course, that's using the fantasy, ga um, fantasy in games, toxic waste green. Um, because we've come in with the yellow, that has now been muted down a little bit. So this edge step is going to bring, um, you know, some sharpness to some of the edges and just it's a nice touch. I think um, it's probably optional. So if you're, you know, trying to get through your death guard a little faster, you could probably skip this step. Now I'm coming in with Screaming Bell. I'm going to use that for the gun barrels uh, and also the tanks on the back of the guns. And in when it came down to doing some of the Terminators or Plague Marines that have bells on them, any bells I'm I'm doing screaming bell, go figure. Um, and you can see I'm kind of using it out of the pot, which is sloppy and lazy. But I'm also what you can't see off camera is I'm frequently dipping my brush in my water pot. Again, super lazy. But and with metallics, you can't really. I mean, usually they don't work too good with a wet palette, so it's just my way of keeping it flowing smoothly. Uh, adding a little water on that plastic palette well there. All right, for any of the symbols, the flies or the Nurgle symbols when it came to other uh, models, I'm just using Balthazar Gold again. All right, now I'm going to take Runefang Steel. I'm just going to sort of lightly dry brush splotch it along the surface of the spike strips on the top. They're looking a little too uniform. So I just wanted to give them a little bit of visual interest by um, sort of brightening up some of the edging and, and the spikes. And you can see I'm using a small makeup brush. I've just totally transitioned to using those for a lot of dry brush work. They're just fantastic. You hear about them more and more. I think I first heard of them on um, Tabletop Minions from Uncle Adam there. Uh, he suggested using them and uh, and then I bought like three packs of them and I have a ton because it just works so well for painting these models. But yeah, that's what I'm doing here. And yeah, I'm also coming in and just highlighting, you know, painting perpendicular to the um, edges of those engine components just to bring out some of that detail as well. This step, I'm going to airbrush Druchi Violet just over anywhere that there's um, like boils and pustules and things like that, wounds. This is a step I kind of, I've never airbrushed these washes before, and I kind of picked this up from Zatkast Kagoon's dark, um, grimdark style where he talks about airbrushing this. I had never even thought of doing that, and it actually works really well. I, I sort of thought it was just going to pool and, and spiderweb, but. If you turn your airbrush pressure down enough, it'll it'll work out okay. You can, I think, brush this on as well. It, you'll just what'll happen is it just won't be as blended, and you're going to have a little bit more brush strokes and and sort of like tide marks. Uh, but and and in future iterations of this paint job scheme, I actually switched to using Caraberg Crimson a lot more on the wounds and not using Druchi Violet because it didn't Druchi wasn't showing up quite right. 
Uh, now this step, very basic. I'm just pulling down the metals a bit by glazing them with a bit of Agrax Earthshade. Um, any of the non-gloss shades from GW will sort of take the punch out of metallics. Um, it'll matte them down a bit. So I'm doing that on purpose here um, with the sort of Balthazar gold areas. So yeah, here I'm coming in with the Karoberg Crimson because like I said, the purple just didn't look quite right because I want it to look sore like and, and inflamed and, and whatnot. So that's why I like the Karoberg a little bit more. It's not coming, when it goes down on this green, it doesn't look reddish really. It looks bruised. I don't know. I, I really like it and I think it makes a great backdrop for the bloodiness I'm going to use in the wounds later. Now this tank really represents the first time I've managed to use AK Interactive weathering products of any kind. They just weren't easy to get in Canada for the longest time, I would say. And now um, a local store, actually multiple local stores have started to carry it. And so I loaded up on all kinds of like pretty interesting and cool weathering products. I know AK Interactive is a bit of a um, controversial brand right now, I think. I don't know a lot about the story and unfortunately I just am probably going to keep using these products because I don't have a ton of alternatives available and they seem to be totally awesome because here I'm using rust streaks and then I'm going to come in and use the um, mineral white spirits they're called with a either a damp brush or a damp um, q-tip and kind of wipe down and it's going to still leave a bit of the rust streakiness but certainly they won't look as like coarse as these do. And it's a little awkward to figure out where to put the streaks on some of these spots, but with the white spirits, you can kind of correct it and even erase some of them. At some, at some points, I think I'm actually way too heavy with the mineral or uh, the white spirits. And so I basically erase these marks, but it's been fun to learn them. And, and I just think with Death Guard, any of these rust products and, and sort of weathering products are just great. To highlight the weapons, uh, the barrels, and the tanks, I'm just using GW Fulgurite Copper. So here's where things get weird, I think. Um, like I said, I was figuring this out as I went along, and I had watched a Vallejo pigment tutorial where they talked about using their washes as like the medium for the pigment and to sort of lay it down and have it have it sort of fixed really well so i used some of their i would which i really like their rust wash and i'm using that with abtolung 502's rust pigment but as you can see it just looks like orange paint like it's just i know it's going to dry matte but i wasn't loving this like it just looks weird and not not natural. The other mistake I've made here is for any rusted or heavily rusted areas, I really think a bit of typhus corrosion or frankly a lot of typhus corrosion would have been a better idea to give it that texture that rust often has and, and that corroded look. So I probably should have and will do that from now on on future vehicles, etc., or future Death Guard units. I'll start off with some typhus corrosion first, especially on these spike tri strips. I really think that would have helped. And yeah, you can see how I'm using it here on the on the tracks. And right away, I knew I made a big mistake here because it just doesn't look right. It's too much and it's too opaque and yeah, I was like, how am I going to fix this right there? I'm actually, I think I was getting some water and trying to wipe it off and just, ugh. so we'll figure out how to fix that later. Then I did the same thing in amongst the track mechanisms and the gears and whatnot. Um, I, I don't hate the final result, but I, I just think I took a really weird approach to it because this is just so heavy and it was something where after doing it, I knew I was going to have to find a way to make it just look a little less intense, a little more natural, because it's it's pretty hardcore here.
So the first thing I did in my attempt to fix it was take some 99% isopropyl alcohol and take a Q-tip with that and sort of just start to rub it off of like some of the edging, you know, hoping some would stay there so that you'd still have that mottled rust look, but not as opaque and paint-like. And yet still the final result is kind of paint-like if I'm being honest. And so I'll do my best to, to offset that, but um, and I, I think I try using some of this isopropyl on the tracks, etc. But it was, I don't know, it was on there pretty good, so it wasn't coming off that great. Well, then I thought, okay, it's just too monotonous, right? It's just one shade of orange everywhere on the rust. So I decided adding a little modeling, add a little uh, color variation to the rust would help. So I take Panzer Light Rust uh, by Vallejo, and honestly, any. I mean, light orange or, you know, a, a light rust from almost any brand would work. And I take a bit of um, blister pack foam or sponge foam and I just lightly dab it all over. This is kind of how you do paint chipping, um, you know, if that's your, if that's how you, your method you like to use. Um, but in this case, it's adding the texture of the rust itself. Uh, since doing this tank, I've messed around with some additional rust products. I'm I'm picking up um, rust deposits from from AK and their weathering pencils, and I'm just finding other ways to do the rust. Um, but in the end, I think this worked out okay. And I do this stippling with a couple different colors. Yeah, so here's a classic rust product, Riser Rust from GW. My pot's really old and most of my dry paints just do not last this long, but somehow Riser Rust has just kept on going for years. Um, anyway, so I'm taking one of my old dry brushes, it's kind of in rough shape, and again, just dabbing and rubbing it on um, to get brighter, brighter patches of orange here and there. I'm, I'm still trying to create that um, you know, moderation in the color or um, variation, not moderation, variation in the color and brighter spots of orange to make the rust more interesting. So yet another experiment. experiment. Vallejo has a number of weathering products that are water-based, which is nice because they're not, you know, white spirits based or whatever enamels. Um, I thought, let's try oil stains and just put it all over the, the motor gears of the, of the weapon, of the, of the mortar. And I think it looks pretty good. Like you, you wouldn't want to come in and matte varnish after the fact on this stuff because I think it would get rid of that oily sheen that it's giving it. But I think it looks really good and it pulls out some of the details and it looks very machinery-like. One of the final colors I'm using to put on some more of that bright rust is Rat Skin Flesh from GW, which is clearly meant for Skaven. Just lightly putting it on here and there creating more of that rust variety, um, you know, variations in the rust texture. One of the hallmarks of the grimdark style from Zat Cascagoon is his use of streaking grime. Now, when I've tried to use it as experiment, sort of, it left things very matte and, and obscured. I don't know how to describe it. I'm pretty sure it was my fault because um, you're supposed to come back in and remove it with some white spirit on like a Q-tip, for example. And I was really hesitant to use it here and because uh, I was liking how the tank was looking with the green, etc. So I didn't want to mess that up. So I just do a little bit on the front of the dozer blade. I'm just getting comfortable with it. I really do like after wiping it off, it is creating these nice streaks, this grimy gross looking effect but i again i wouldn't want to do it hardcore all over the entire model because i didn't want to just obliterate the brightness of the toxic green i had and whatnot so i didn't want to wreck wrecks the wrong word but i didn't want to totally obscure it so i was fairly particular about where i put the streaking grime but i do like the final effect i think it looks good and i think it especially looks good around the bottom sort of edges or bottom surfaces of the tank now I'm gonna come in with Vallejo Game Ink Brown. And what I like to do with this is create little sort of scorch marks, um, usually on the front of the tank where it would be hit by weapon fire. And not a ton of them, but enough, you know, just to give it a look of like it's been in combat. They also, um, this brown is a nice color for doing just even variations on the surface, just to give a little bit of tonal variation or even shading. Um, you can create really nice shadows with this. So airbrushing these inks is just a nice uh, tool in the toolkit. But here I'm specifically using it to create charring effects here and there. 
To go with that, I'm using Vallejo Black Ink, same thing, airbrushing it onto wherever I've done those brown marks. I'm doing a little bit of that black just in the middle of the brown so it looks again like a scorch mark, like a, a plasma bolt hit it or something like that, just to create the look of charring and fire. a boring step null and oil i'm just painting that onto the metallics of the weapons just because usually the guns have you know a fair bit of detailing on them and i'm just you know pulling out some of that detail with null and oil it's right out of the bottle i rarely thin washes and glazes i know that's probably heresy but i don't on screen is a bottle of one of the greatest paints of all time which is uh, citadel bolt gun metal they don't make that anymore lead belcher is good it's not quite as good um, all i'm using it for is to do the various rivets all over the tank and like this is one where you could use pretty much any silvery toned metallic that you like to do it this is something i stole i saw this idea online just a little dribble of nurgle's rot on the bottom lip of the mortar again i cannot take credit for doing that it was something i saw online and thought it looked really cool now i'm using volupus pink and i'm doing that over a coat of i want to say rakarth flesh and i'm forgetting what paint i used to base it you can see it's really pink. I found it too pink. Um, uh, here's one of those times when I should have used like um, contrast medium to thin it. And then I wipe it off my finger. Not necessarily to great effect. I was trying to brighten them up. I don't know. It, it's not looking great. So anyway, I'll come back and fix those later. What I like to do at Death, Card, it, Death Guard is fill any of these holes, these rot, these pock marks with Blood for the Blood God. I pretty much do it on all of them. A lot of people, like you might use rust, you might use slime, you might use, you know, something else. But I, I think of them as like wounds and sores. And I think Blood for the Blood God looks really cool with them. And the other thing is it really suits the greenish tone I've used here. So that red against this green just looks really nice and really pops. Um, then I take some Tesseract Glow, and I think at this point I'm just sort of feeling things out. And I use that just to coat the, the pustules, basically, and make those look green and, and shiny. If you don't already have a group of local friends that talk painting on like Facebook Messenger or something, I, I'd suggest getting that. It's a great support mechanism. So I went to them and I said I wasn't super happy with the way the rust looked on this and the suggestion was, hey, take some, some metal. So in this case, I'm using Runefang steel and just, you know, lightly dry brush the edges to look like the rust has worn off. Uh, of course, I, I don't even know why I wouldn't have thought of that, but I think it does definitely improve the look of the rust. Again, I, I still, I've said again about 75 times in this video, I still think using typhus corrosion on the metals before doing the rust would have looked better. We're getting down to the point where there's a lot of details left to paint on the tank. Well, not a lot, but, but these steps are not going to blow your mind with, uh, you know, Okay, none of this has blown your mind, but it's pretty simple. I'm just painting the skulls on the front of the tank, and I'm going to start with a base coat of Zandri Dust. I'm then going to wash that with Skeleton Horde Contrast Paint, which is one of the greats. You know, I, I know that people do videos on their favorite contrast paints, and I'd say Skeleton Horde is, is really up there on some of the most useful ones. Then I'm just going to highlight that with a bit of Screaming Skull. And I'm going to add a little glaze medium from Vallejo. By the way, wonderful stuff. It really helps to blend colors like your layers when you're feathering or doing um, really small highlights. It helps it from, you know, prevents it from being a little too um, brush strokey and chunky when it comes to the highlights. Although you can't tell from this footage by any means. But anyway, glaze medium is a really good way to smooth out some of these lighter colored paints. So I'm just going to highlight these skulls with Screaming Skull. Then a really small highlight with Vallejo Model Color, Model Color Cold White, just on the very high points of the like eyebrow bones and whatnot. Uh, you almost can't see it. It's almost off camera, but anyway, you get the idea. Then I'll just take some Rackarth flesh and I'm just going to, with a bit of the glaze medium, which I did off camera, I'm just you know bringing back some of the fleshiness to the tubes uh, the flesh tubes i guess that's what they are 
Um, that's one of the final steps, to be honest, and and then I'm basically finished the tank. I don't come back with a, a full matte varnish or gloss varnish. Sometimes I do, but a lot of the time these days I feel like it's going to wreck the finish that I've got on a lot of the various. Like I wouldn't want those nice shiny wounds to be matte. So folks, thanks for watching. This turned out way longer than I wanted it to. I was like, maybe I can make a six minute video. Uh, here's the final look at the Plague Burst Crawler. I hope you like the finished result. I really dig it. I'm super happy with it. If you did, I hope you liked the video. Maybe share it with your friends and subscribe. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.